Teaching English as a Second Language Teaching English as a Second Language TESOL, refers to teaching English to students whose first language is not English. Usually offered in a region where English is the dominant language and natural English language immersion situations are apt to be plentiful. Usually focused on essential vocabularies, such as family names, household objects, basic adjectives, place names, high-frequency verbs and modal expressions. The teaching profession has historically used different names for TEFL and TESOL. However, the more generic term teaching English to speakers of other languages, TESOL, is increasingly used to describe the profession. It covers both TESOL and TEFL as an umbrella term. Both native speakers and non-native speakers successfully train to be English language teachers. In order to teach English as a second language to English language learners, or ELLs, one must pass a written and oral test in English to demonstrate proficiency. The TESOL profession made progress during the 1970s and 1980s in achieving desired goals, such as shifting its focus from product-oriented to process-oriented teaching, specifically referring to an instructor facilitating a learning environment that allows the students to strategize and formulate their ideas such as activities that utilize creativity and exploration rather than strictly learning facts from a rigid curriculum to a more flexible one. South Korea have their future careers influence their majors as early as their middle school years. Sangwoo Lee, a Ph.D. conducted a study and released information that socioeconomic gaps exist within South Korea from female graduates who attend the same type of higher education or study the same disciple subject due to parents' social networks, ACPA 2021. The use of these various terms has led to confusion about the training options for both prospective students and employers. Because there is no global standard for the training of English language teachers, it is important to look beyond the actual acronym, title to the components of the training program. Short-term certificate programs that do not have an academic affiliation resulting in credits or degrees, such as CELTA or other non-credit programs, can be a good launching pad for beginning positions internationally, but they will generally not provide sufficient training for a career unless a person already has substantial experience and a degree in a closely related field. People interested in pursuing a career as an English language teacher should invest in credit-bearing programs that result in a university-recognized certificate or degree program, M-A-T-E-S-O-L, M-A Applied Linguistics particularly if one wants to work in higher education. Because of the confusing certification situation, Employers now generally look for a certificate that reflects at least 100 hours of instruction to determine if the candidate has sufficient preparation to begin teaching English. Institutions with higher standards will require applicants to possess a master's degree for employment. People wishing to teach in the K-12 public school system in the United States will need a state teacher certification at a minimum and an L endorsement, or other state qualification, to be qualified to teach L. When choosing a graduate program, it is important to determine if the program is designed to prepare students to teach in K-12 settings or in adult education settings. Most programs are designed for one or the other, but not both. In California, teachers may become certified as California Teachers of English Learners, CTEL. T 
TESOL is offered as a both a major and a minor at many universities throughout the United States. Qualification requirements vary considerably from country to country and among employers within the same country. In many institutions it is possible to teach without a degree or teaching certificate. Some institutions will consider it necessary to be a native speaker with an MATESOL. A university degree in English language and literature can also be of value, as indeed can any specialist degree. Other institutions consider a proof of English proficiency, a university degree and a basic teaching qualification to be more than sufficient. However, the level of academic qualification need not be the most important qualification, as many schools will be more interested in one's interpersonal skills. For trainers wishing to enter the academic field, publications can be as important as qualifications, especially if they relate to English use in the field. Where there is a high demand for teachers and no statutory requirements, employers may accept otherwise unqualified candidates. Each country is different, and acceptance depends on demand for English teachers and the teachers. Previous teaching and life experiences. The TEFL industry and language schools have settled on 100 hours of coursework as the minimum standard for a recognized accredited TEFL course. Private language schools are likely to require at least a certificate based on successful completion of a course consisting of a minimum of 100 hours. Major programs like EPIC will offer a higher salary to teachers who have completed any TEFL course, online or otherwise, so long as the program meets the minimum 100-hour requirement. Internet-based TEFL courses are generally accepted worldwide, and particularly in Asia, where the largest job markets exist in China. Korea, Taiwan and Japan. For China the minimum TEFL requirement is 120 hours. In Asia there has also been a tendency to hire TEFL teachers on superficial criteria, such as race with Caucasians preferred, on the assumption that an English teacher or native English speaker should be white. This is proven especially true in Thailand, a big employer of TEFL teachers, with adverts frequently calling explicitly for native English speakers. Partly this is driven by commercial expectations in the private sector, where parents feel that paying extra Fees for TEFL teacher should warrant an American or British TEFL teacher, the schools will not risk losing students over this. Age-gender requirements might also be encountered in some countries outside Europe and America, for example the Middle East, schools might hire men over women or vice versa. And they might hire only teachers in a certain age range, usually between 20 and 40 years of age. In China, age requirements can differ across the country due to provincial government regulations. Anyone under the 19th of may be able to teach TEFL, but usually only in a volunteer situation, such as a refugee camp. Those who want to teach in South Korea should understand that they as of right now in 2022, are very highly test-driven country and have some of the highest rates in literacy, 
science and mathematics. Foreigners should also be aware of high academic standards or for all subjects as they thrive for the best grades and best education. Not only is the academics high within students, but also with hiring educators to work in South Korea that has such high academic ratings you must have a TEFL or TESOL certification, you must have a bachelor's degree or higher form of education. As for earning certifications in either TEFL, teaching English as a foreigner language, or TESOL, teaching English to speakers of other languages, the classes you take help prepare to teach in the classroom with materials and lesson plans, also including modules with assignments to help be more successful within classrooms. The best way to also have a school recognize the abilities you have and what you can provide for them to help make their school better when hiring you to teach, is to already have in the classroom experience.